Sunday Mountain friends, what a joy it is to be able to come together virtually to share with each of you the Word of God. I want to take a moment to thank Pastor Blake for another preaching opportunity and let us pause for a word of prayer. Gracious Father, again, we say thank you. Thank you for first your darling son Jesus and this another wonderful day. I thank you for another opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk and preach your word. I ask now that you use me, use me as your instrument. Give me what to say and how to say it and the power to preach. Oh God, I pray that your word will go forth, for hearts and minds will be encouraged. And it will be encouraged. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning discussion, I invite you to turn your Bibles to the 63rd numbers of Psalms. Psalm 63. Psalms 63. I will read the King James translation. I invite you to read the translation that you have before you. This psalm is a psalm of David while he's in the wilderness of Judah. He said, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus I will bless thee while I live. I will lift my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. But I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings I will rejoice. My soul fall hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. But those who seek my soul to, to destroy it, shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion of the foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. When we look at Psalms 61, 62, and 63, was probably written when David was seeking refuge from Absalom's rebellion. Psalm 61, we see a prayer of security and assurance. 63 and 1 says, O oh God, listen to my prayer. Hear my prayer, for, for, for the ends of the earth I cry to you for help when my heart is overwhelmed. See, David must have, have been far away from home when he wrote this song. But one thing is good to know that God is not limited by geographical location. God does not abandon us. His strength is always with us. See, wherever you go, you can trust God will be there to answer your cries for help. Notice Psalms 62. David places all of his hope in God. 62 and 1 says, I will wait quietly before God. My victory comes from him. 62 and 8 says, Oh, my people trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. So here in Psalm 63, David has a desire for God's presence, he has a God, desire for God's provision, and he has a desire for God's protection. Notice, David was going through some tough times. He had been driven from his throne by Absalom. He was in the wilderness 
of Judah, a dry and barren place. He was far away from the sanctuary, and that was the sum and center of his life. Ahimophel, the, the traitor, was once his friend and counselor. He was hiding from his enemies, and David was intensely lonely. But one thing, new Sunny Mount and friends, one thing that we can learn from David, we will have some barren situations. We will have some hard times. We will have some difficult circumstances, but just, just in case you have not, oh my, just keep on living. Trouble is coming your way. And just perhaps, just maybe, David felt like Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. What does it say there? It said, we are troubled on every side. We are, but yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. All of our risks, all of our humiliation, all, our, all, all opportunities for God to show his power in us and through us. Notice David again. David is longing for someone to ease his loneliness. But I believe it was being driven from the sanctuary that hurt David the most. It was not the throne. It was not his family. It was not the friends that he left behind. David missed the place of prayer. David missed the sanctuary of God. New Sunday Mountain friends, one thing I have learned in this COVID experience, relationships are important. But our first relationship is with God. But notice David in Psalms 63. David begins with the, the theological, but he, he moves over to the testimonial. He says, oh God, thou art my God. David here, he calls on Elohim. He calls on the, the creator God. He calls on God in all of his strength. David had a relationship with God. Thou art my God. You see, David talked to God. David prayed to God. And this is part of what it means to have a relationship with God. Notice the text. David said, early, I seek thee. The NIV says, earnestly, I will seek you. The CJB says, eagerly, I will seek you. Right here, we see whatever translation that you use or read, you see that this was important to David. If you're eager about it, you search him earnestly and be early about it. If you're earnest about it, you'll seek him eagerly and early. See, there was a story told of a seaman who said, in fierce storms, we must put the ship in a certain position and keep her there. And he said that Christians should do the same by putting their souls in a certain position that is on Jesus and deliberately staying there. See, David was completely committed. Every part of his being, he was crying out to God with everything that he had. When he said, my soul thirsted for thee, my flesh Longing for thee. See, this thirst and this thirst that David had is showing reminders of his intense and desire to have God, that we should have a God. David was showing he was completely committed to wanting God. David cried out to God in 
everything, that, every way that was imaginable. And there is nothing in the world that can satisfy our souls like God. But one thing here, to read the text, perhaps what made things so difficult for David was his memory in the worshiping in the sanctuary. Just want to show, share a story with you about our youngest child, Braxton. Braxton told me one day, he said, Daddy, I just want to go to church. I just want to go to New Sunny Mount. I want to run around in the sanctuary in New Sunny Mount. And I tried to explain to him the best that I could, just hold on, son, hold on to your sanctuary memories. And one Sunday, one Sunday morning, Dana and I didn't know it, but Braxton got up and got dressed, put his suit on, put his snare in the, in the, in the case and set it by the door and said, Daddy, I'm just going to act like I'm going to church. And I told him, son, that's good. I said, now, when we get the day's going to come. And when you get there, don't be stingy on your praise. You give God your best praise. You play your heart out that when, when that day comes. Notice three and four. David, he's in the midst of a trial. David, he's in the midst of a pandemic. But notice, David, he's focused on God's loving kindness and not on the circumstances. And I believe a great deal of depression and discouragement can come from not doing what David did. Yes, we're human. And it's easier to focus on our circumstances than an unseen God. But the solution is knowing God so well that you can trust him. What do we do? We get to know our friends. We spend time with them. We get to know our families. We get to learn them and know that they are Trustworthy. And we need to do the same thing with God. See, if you don't spend time in his word, if you don't spend time in prayer, if you don't spend time in the church, you will not have the level of trust that you need with God. David knew God had promised his presence and he would not go back on his promises. Reverend Love, I heard you last week. Yeah, I heard you. Oh yes, God is our refuge and strength, our very present help in trouble. See, according to David, this was better than life itself. He said, I'm going to praise you with my lips. I'm going to praise you with my hands. I'm going to praise you in my pain. I'm going to praise you in my circumstances. As long as I live, I'm going to praise God. But look at five. David, he gives a testimony. David gives his witness. What does he say? My soul is satisfied. But here it's important to reflect on this now. Don't forget about David's situation. He's on the run. He left everything behind. He's looking to the, to the next person for his next meal. But, lo, but notice David. But I, he says, I got a God who keeps me satisfied and keeps me singing. Look at 6 and 8. When I remember thee in my bed, I meditate on thee in the night watches because thou hast been my help. Therefore in the shadow of thy wings I will rejoice. My soul followed hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. See to remember it is to recall. It is to think back, to think again. And the text said now when you study the Bible pay attention to the grammar of the text. The text says in the night watches. 
See, the Israelites had three watches in their nights, and since David wrote most of this, it, 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 we can assume that he was up all night. Oh, but I like Eugene Peterson. The way he says, verses 6 and 8 in the, in, in the Message Bible. He said, if, if I'm sleepless at midnight, I spend the hours in grateful reflection because you have always stood up for me and I'm free to run and play. I hold on to you for dear life and you hold on to me steady as a post. Oh, see, look, watch now. David suffered from insomnia. And as I was preparing this message, I did a quick Google search, and it says one out of four Americans develop in insomnia each year. Loss of production is due to insomnia. 83% of those who suffer depression will experience insomnia. And insomnia is a major contributor to motor vehicle crashes. New Sunny Mount and friends, David had a remedy for that. Yes, he did. David did not think about his situations. David kept his thoughts on God. And see, I'm reminded this morning of 1 Peter 5 and 7, it says, can you give all your worries and your cares to God, for he cares for you. See, carrying your worries, carrying your stresses, carrying your daily struggles on you by yourself, see, you have not placed all your trust in God completely. Look at the text. Remember, pay attention to the grammar of the text. It says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. There you have some responsibility here. It takes humility to recognize that God cares and to admit you need him and you need help from others. See, letting God have all your anxieties, what does it call for? It calls for a call of action. It does not call for passivity. Oh, but the songwriter helps us here. Songwriter said, I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. I, in my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Oh, tempted and tried, I, I need a great savior, one who can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. He, 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 all, he all my cares and sorrows will share. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me. Oh, Jesus alone. The story was told, or it has been said, if Satan is keeping you awake at night, worry, the best thing for you to do is pray. See, he does not want you talking to God, so he'll leave you alone to keep you from praying. Notice here, David, David had peace. David had peace. Why? Because he said, because you always stood up for me. Oh my God, oh my son, my oh my friends, just as God was with David in his past and in his present and in his future, he will do and be the same for you. I'm almost done. Look at the eighth portion of verse 11. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. 
Why do you like this verse, preacher? I'm glad you asked. Remember I told you, pay attention to the grammar of the text. David here, he's speaking in third person. And what I like about it, here David, he's making a statement of faith. What's rich in here? David, he's not knowing the outcome, but he's going to rejoice in God, knowing that he will survive this situation. David bases this statement of faith on his knowledge of God. And David was determined to trust God throughout this situation. I'm done. Let me leave you with this. Deuteronomy 6, 13. What does it say? Fear the, the Lord your God. Serve him only and take your oaths in his name. What is, that? what is he talking about, preacher? What is that? He's simply saying, stay true to God. And when you stay true to God, when you do this, you can boast about God, boast about God's presence, and boast about his help. Stay true to God. Oh, I pray this, the words from this morning, were helpful for you today and in the days to come. Let us pray. Grace of God, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. I pray again that it was helpful to all of them. We heard your word this morning. Continue your blessings upon your sunny mount, our pastor, as we go through the challenges of this week. Be with our children as we as they go on forward to another chapter in their lives, another school year. Be with our educators, continue to guide and lead them as they prepare for us. Again, we just say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you don't have a church home, we invite you to find a Bible-believing church. Unite with them and grow in the knowledge of the Lord. God bless.
When I was growing up, before you went on any trip or vacations in a car, you had to plan the journey. In those days, you got out a map and calculated how long it would take to get there, the best places to stop and get something to eat, even gas up the car. And if it was a very long trip, the best place to stay that night to the next day. There may even be places you want to stop on the way to visit also. There was a lot of planning that went into a week-long adventure like this, but today it's a lot easier. We have global positioning systems, or GPSs, in our car and on our phone. That takes pretty much all the guesswork out of it. You can even specify what route you want to take. All interstate highway, no interstate highway. The shortest route, the fastest route, the most scenic route. So how long it takes you to get there is totally your choice. As New Sunday Mount scholars, you have started such a journey from kindergarten to your high school senior year. On this journey, you won't be sightseeing as such as gathering knowledge on what you plan to be when you become an adult or as we prefer to as your career. All of our grades school New Sunday Mount Scholars, your journey starts with packing your bags with everything you see interesting, fun, and things you would like to learn about. It's like a food buffet. We want you to try and experience everything you can. Because how do you know what you like or not like if you don't try it? Mathematics, science, literature, music, art, history, the more is waiting on you to invite you in to come along this adventure that you will be on. After six years, as a new Sunny Mount Middle School scholar, you are allowed to start choosing your route or some of the classes you want to take. But now the road is not as easy. There are steep hills, quizzes. There is road construction, projects, and there's even speed traps tests but we are not discouraged because we know from philippians 4 and 13 we can do all things through christ that strengthens me you start to see things that you like to study and do the destination or your career choice is in sight now our new sunday mount high school scholars you are about to get off the main interstate and start looking for your off-ramp. You are behind the steering wheel now, choosing courses preparing you for your career. Some may decide to take the medical off-ramp, doctors, physicians, surgeons, some the science off-ramp, engineering, architect, researcher, some the art off-ramp, music, writer, artist, actor, some the trade off ramp, construction, carpentry, electrician. Some the mathematical off ramp, accountant, computer programmer, financial planner. And even those might take the off ramp to lead them toward teaching, political office, and even 
pastoring. Don't ever think you on this journey alone. Your parents, school teachers, counselors, and especially the new Sunday Mouth Power of One Ministry, which has someone assigned, which has someone assigned to you. If you haven't heard from them yet, please let us know. Is waiting to help you, especially after you graduate from high school. The Power of One Ministry will be there with scholar with scholarships, financial assistance, emphasis in continuing your continuing your educational journey. If it would be college, technical school, or trade school, or etc. So, as new Sunny Mount Scholar this year. Your path is filled with more challenges than any of us has ever faced. But be assured, as it says in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Stay blessed, stay safe, and may God's grace and mercy be with you. Greetings, New Sunny Mount, and all our special guests who have joined us on today. These are your announcements for this week. God's eye is on the little sparrow, and I know he watches me. Our Living in Triumph Bible Study is every Monday, virtually, at 7 p.m. Young adults, you can be sure if God provides for the birds of the air, he has certainly got you. It's good to know you can depend on him. Please note your meeting room ID. So let's come together and pray about it, for God yet hears and answers prayer. Or we might just want to say, thank you, Lord. Join us in the prayer room every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. and Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Please note your conference call number. New Sunny Mount Young People, school has started for you. Be assured that we will continue to be here with you every Tuesday evening, virtually, at 5 p.m. And you know we will always have fun. We thank God for our youth leaders and their commitment to assist our young people in their spiritual walk and to stay connected. Ages 12 and under, note your meeting room. Ages 13 to 17, note your meeting room. The Bible is the greatest book ever written. Join us on Wednesday at 12 noon and 6 p.m. as we study the anointed word of God together. Please note your conference call number. Our new Sunny Mount Mail Course will be holding their 13th annual concert virtually on Sunday, September 13th at 2 p.m. There will be special guests and, of course, our own male chorus, Praising God in Song. We want to congratulate our men on this occasion, so we're asking all of our ministries to send a flyer of congratulations to them. Please note the deadline for your greetings, Friday, September 4th. Please send to Sister Anita. Her email address is aws at nsmbestl.com. Again, her email is aws at nsmbestl.com. Thanks very much. The Health and Wellness Ministry is once again hosting the Sightman Mammography Van on Saturday, September 12th from 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. This event is by appointment only. Call 314-747-7222 or 800-600-3606 for your appointment. Masks are required. For any further information, inbox ministry leader, Sister Betty Tobler. Her email is bhtobler at sbcglobal.net. Again, her email is bhtobler at sbcglobal.net. Or call her at 314-267-9774. That's 314-267-9774.
The Show Me Hope Line of Missouri is accessible 24 hours a day to assist you during these challenging times of COVID-19. Please note the numbers for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, COVID-19 Hotline, and other avenues to help you as we learn how to cope and live this life together. New Sunny Mount and friends, we know not the day nor the hour that Jesus Christ will return. The Chicago Mass Choir has a song in their repertoire that says, I pray we'll all be ready for his return. Be reminded that our pastor, the Reverend Brandon Blake, and our church ministry leaders are praying and petitioning God to keep you always in his care until he returns. Have a wonderfully blessed week. Thank you for watching New Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church Online. But don't stop there. Join us every Sunday by subscribing to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this with a friend. You can also support our ministry by giving in these five ways. Remember, we have an individual and community responsibility to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. Thank you for watching and God bless.